Oh, we just broke it. Pretty realistic, right? Chains are usually that easy to break. Uh, nope. Hey guys, welcome to part 4 of how to make a chain simulation in the Unity game engine. In this one, we're using a script that I made that makes it easier to make chains. Or basically, trails or lines of pretty much any kind of objects. So, sit back and chain your mind to this process. Okay, so we just tested our simulation. We made a short chain that we can test our physics and collision with. However, it's not really the easiest way of creating chains that we can test their behavior, or any chains. So I've made a pair of scripts that can make it easier to clone and modify objects in Unity, and this includes chains, and the cool thing about this, it can actually automatically orient chains in the way that makes them chains. It can turn them like 90 degrees. Just, again. I posted an image to Pinterest about this chain simulation, and of course I'm also creating a video series on it. So to use it, what you're going to do is to download this attached file, Easy Object Cloning Iteration Setup. So, so in this case I'm going to save this into my Unity Chain Sim project folder, which contains the resources, hit save. When we go back into Unity, there is this zip file containing all the resources for the chain cloning setup. We're going to unarchive this inside of the Unity project, and there should be a resulting folder, the same folder that this zip file is in, in this case, Unity project folder. So now, what we're going to want to do, there is a cloner script, a documentation, which you can read if you want a bit of help on how to use this, this editor folder, which contains a script that's basically just designed to add the apply option to this cloner script. So this is the one that you want to attach to an object. So this one has a metallic material applied to all of them. I guess I already did that just for the first chain. I'm going to select all of these objects and basically just delete them because we don't really want them anymore. This, that was a test chain. And then I'm going to select the chain link object here, drag the cloner script onto it. What we're going to want to do is to start instantiating it and moving it to make chains. Firstly, we're going to drag the chain link object into this object to clone variable here, this object slot here. And this is the object that it's going to clone, it's going to clone itself. And this is what you would want most of the time. And we also found that a good value to put into the Z axis to move a chain the way that you want is 0 0.1 Five. What we're going to do, type in 0 0.15 into the Z axis of the local position modifier. And the reason that we want to use the local position modifier is the chain object has a local axis that it can rotate and move around. The world axis is the general world axis. So it's, it's these positions right here. If we were to rotate the chain, its local Z axis would be in this direction, and it would be in this direction if we did not do that before we did that. And so that's why we're using the local axis, because it'll always face the right direction in the direction that we want to move the chain locally of the local rotation modifier, 90 degrees. And let me just show you what that does. If you look at this, 90 degrees is basically how you want to rotate the chain, and again, moving it on the local axis. Okay, so once we've set all of these values the way that we want them to be set, we can just hit apply, basically add or subtract these, depending on whether all of these values are negative or not, to the transform. One more thing that we might want to set is the clone name. So we're going to copy this chain link name. What it's going to do is it's going to name the object that it is instantiating, with what is in this clone name field, plus the instances in scene variable, which it increases when you instantiate the object. So chain link plus this. And we also want to type in a space after the name, space the name and this apart. Just hit apply. Oh, why is it not doing anything? I swear it worked before. Like what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to just only move the object, so it's supposed to rotate it by 0.15 on the Z axis and rotate it 90 degrees on that same axis that it's moving, except it's not instantiating it. So what if we check this on? Oh, so it is doing something. Let me just check the script here. Just edit this. So we want to execute this no matter what, only have it execute this based on this 
a lot of you might not be familiar with this stuff if you're watching this part of the video. So as you can see, we just moved these objects. We basically just created a very short chain. So to essentially just kind of continue doing this, and you can see that this is actually pretty impressive. It's pretty useful as well, like this is happening automatically. One thing that we can also experiment with, world Y rotation to something low. So what this is going to do is essentially make a curved chain if we instantiate like a, several of these objects. By turning it on the world Y axis, but it's going to move it and it's going to rotate it each time and it can create like a curved chain. We're already rotating these chains in order to interlace them. So we're already rotating the chains, the same axis that we're moving them on. If we rotate it on the local Y axis, because this chain, for instance, is rotated on its side, the Y axis is facing this direction, I guess like this, which can cause problems. So we want to rotate the chain, the world Y axis, no matter if it's, if it's like chain odd X number, or chain even number x, if that makes sense. We're gonna set this to something low, like five, again. So, and what this is going to do is essentially, effectively going to allow us curved lines of chain links, or chains. We can also adjust the curvature to something higher, like maybe 10, or even 15 if we wanted to, or negative 15, and we can continue the curve at different tightness. Five. We can just rotate it kind of like this. Maybe choose 15 again. Kind of a winding line of chains if we wanted to. One more thing that we also might want to do is, is to freeze the position of the starting chain so that it won't move because this is essentially how we're anchoring the chain. We're going to essentially do that to the first chain. So the active chain link, which is the one that we have selected, is it's leaving behind. Basically what it's doing is it's instantiating itself and then moving it, essentially leaving that chain selected. So what we're going to actually select is because this is not the one, is the starting chain. It doesn't stay that way because it's the one that's selected. So what we want to do is select the one that is just below it, which will select the starting chain, which is the first one that it instantiated all the way down here. Freeze the position here on all axes so it won't move at all. Actually, we might want to kind of create some kind of effect here that will allow it to move on like a certain axis. I don't know. Okay, all axes need to be frozen. Maybe these functions do work on the local axis. So if it rotates just a bit, then it can be moved like on the local axis. I don't know. So now that we've got the simulation here, we can just hit play. You can see what happens here, maybe just because we have like a longer chain, or maybe just because it's more weight because it's a longer chain. It was swinging before because it was a shorter chain. So it is weight that's being placed on it. Okay, so maybe we can like freeze some, the position of some other chains, select I guess maybe this one. And if you select them in the scene here, it might select one of the level of detail objects. Maybe there's a way to fix that, I don't really know. We're going to freeze the position of this one here. And we might also want to freeze the position of this one. Rename this to frozen, I guess. Frozen. Just so you might be able to like tell which one it is. And also, because we don't want it to really fall or have like behaviors that are like more unlike this one, we can select one, the chains that are like this direction from it and this direction from it might like conflict in ways that might like cause these other chains to fall from it, even if this one does not break. So we can just select some, like one of these chains that is two objects down or up from it and freeze the position of that one. Intermediary, I guess, chains and see like which direction they kind of straighten out to. They will kind of straighten out to an arching direction, like from this one to this one, and they will be like arching down and from this one to this one, they and like they will stretch out. So let's just hit play and see how this goes. There's obviously also going to be more weight on them. We can see that all of the chains are like staying attached to their constraints, so that's good. Let's check what's happening with this one. Oh, it seems it broke. It seems like this one, I guess, broke from 
like the end of this other one might have broken from this one. Oh well. Maybe freezing the position of these chains might be kind of a, a glitchy or buggy way of constraining the chains. Like even though this like the middle here, generally the ones that actually stayed are the ends. So even though we just tried to kind of fix it, we kind of get these glitchy problems in these intermediary areas. One thing that we might be able to do is to, oh, we have this selected and we didn't, we froze it, but we didn't rename it. Frozen, we can just rename it the same. So what we can actually do, I guess, is to delete this one. And we don't really have that much spacing. The spacing isn't really that wide between these two chains, but they will kind of rotate and sort of space out, I guess. So it's not really a big deal to us right now. We're just trying to get rid of the chain that might be causing in between these two that might be just causing problems. It's definitely a problematic way when you have intermediary chains along a chain that you've made that's just in space that's not frozen or above a ground like this one. So I've made kind of a placeholder ground and we can see that I guess we can kind of interact with this chain here. Oh, we just broke it. Cool. Pretty realistic, right? Chains are usually that easy to break, like with your bare hands. Uh, nope.